Cody Rhodes has finally broke his silence about his WWE return. So we'll see what he had to say. We'll also see what happened with Ronda Rousey and the other events that went down at night one of WrestleMania. Starting off with Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair. This match between Charlotte and Ronda was expected to main event night one of WrestleMania ever since it was confirmed to happen earlier in the year. But once WWE and Stone Cold Steve Austin agreed to a match, rumors started gaining momentum on Stone Cold and Kevin Owens possibly main eventing night one of WrestleMania. And the final days leading up to WrestleMania night one was very confusing because you had Kevin Owens speaking on Raw about how it'll be a WrestleMania main event edition of the KO show, basically confirming that he and Stone Cold would be closing out night one. But nearly 24 hours later, Ronda Rousey appears on Ellen and talks about how she and Charlotte Flair will be main eventing WrestleMania for the second time and how it was so special and important to her. Well, as we now know, Kevin Owens was right and Ronda Rousey ended up being wrong. Ronda Rousey and Charlotte was the last scheduled match on the card for night one. But after the bell rang for Stone Cold Steve Austin and Kevin Owens, they officially took the main event spot from Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. So you can no longer really call Ronda and Charlotte two-time WrestleMania main eventers because they weren't the last match of night one. Reports are now claiming that allegedly Ronda Rousey was furious when she found out about the truth behind who was main eventing night one of WrestleMania 38. Reports even claim that Ronda Rousey walked out after SmackDown because of this issue and wasn't at the Hall of Fame ceremony. Some wondered at that point if she actually quit or not. A lot of fans also thought that Charlotte and Ronda ended up being stuck in a pretty weird spot on the card. They had to follow up Cody and Seth, as well as Bianca and Becky, and Stone Cold Steve Austin was coming up right after them. So it was tough. Another shock about the Ronda and Charlotte match is that Ronda actually lost. Yeah, Ronda had that moment of making Charlotte tap when the referee was down, but as far as the actual match itself, Charlotte Flair retained her title in probably one of the most shocking outcomes of the night. Ronda was one of the biggest favorites for night one, and almost everyone expected her to have her WrestleMania moment by becoming the new SmackDown Women's Champion, but it surprisingly didn't happen. So, is Ronda still sticking around? Is she going to win the title at Backlash? That's what we're going to have to wait on. It's been rumored for months now that Cody Rhodes would be returning to WWE, like Cody even joked about himself, it was the worst kept secret in wrestling. Everyone knew that Cody would most likely be Seth's opponent, and it became true. Cody Rhodes kept his entire AEW presentation, from his entrance, to his ring gear, to his theme, to his overall character. They let him bring everything over to WWE. Cody had one of the greatest matches of the night with Seth Rollins, paid tribute to his late father, Dusty Rhodes, and picked up the win. Cody Rhodes shared his thoughts on his WWE return through several interviews right after the match that went down. Cody said that when he was approached with the idea, even though it was something that he thought he would never do, it was the easiest decision of his life. He also said that his late father, Dusty Rhodes, also played a part in his decision. He wanted to come back to WWE to win the big one and dedicate it to his father because it's something he always wanted to do was win the world title for Dusty. Cody said he wants to be where Brock and Roman is right now. That's what he wants to compete for. Cody said that he believes that he's the best wrestler in the world and the only way to prove it is to be here in WWE and also beat the best. He also gave a lot of credit to Seth Rollins. He talked about how he was a part of Seth's first dark match in WWE several years ago, and now Seth is one of the greatest wrestlers on the planet. Then during an interview with Variety, Cody touched on the same ideas that have been mentioned during his WWE interview. He said that the only reason why he wanted to get into the ring as a kid was to win the title his father never had, and that was the main WWE world title. He wants what his father never had the chance to hold, and that's what he wants to get done in WWE. Cody also said that his AEW departure had nothing to do with money or creative control. He mentioned how he loved everyone there and wished them nothing but the best. 
So, it was a real emotional return for Cody Rhodes. But he made it quite clear what he's after, and that's the WWE World Title. After WrestleMania 38, there's now only one world title in WWE, so Cody Rhodes would have to work his way into contendership to make that dream come true for Dusty Rhodes. So, it's such a great story, and he already laid out his clear objective as well. So, it'll be fun to see how this all unfolds for Cody Rhodes. As far as other Night 1 events that went down, one of the biggest stories of the night was that Sheamus and The New Day's entire match was cut for time-related reasons. That wasn't the only thing cut. A Drew McIntyre special entrance was also cut for time-related reasons, but Sheamus seemed to be upset after the match cancellation. He posted the scissors emoji to Twitter, of course representing the fact that his match was cut. Kofi Kingston also posted a message on how this is just part of the business, with all the ups and downs. But luckily for them, WWE moved the match to night two, so at least it wasn't a full cancellation like many fans first expected. Then in the Becky Lynch vs. Bianca Belair matchup, the great storytelling continued. Bianca Belair defeated Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, officially putting an end to Becky's long streak. Becky Lynch had appeared as a champion for every active day in WWE, dating back to WrestleMania 35. But that streak is now over after this loss to Bianca Belair. And Becky even said it way back in October. She said that if Becky and herself had a long match at SummerSlam and Bianca loses, nothing would really come from that. Bianca just lost. But if Bianca got robbed of the title, it plants a better story there and gets the fans behind Bianca Belair and really rooting for her to succeed. Six months later and everyone can now see the bigger picture of this story that last year's SummerSlam was setting up. That embarrassing SummerSlam loss ended up having a great long-term payoff of this WrestleMania win for Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair is now undefeated at WrestleMania with two wins and zero losses, and those two wins were back-to-back -back world title wins. So don't look now, but Bianca Belair is starting to create a nice little WrestleMania streak here. Bianca also defeated three out of four horsewomen. Charlotte Flair is the only one that remains, so we'll most definitely take a deeper look at that potential matchup in the coming days. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.